So uh, this is the video of the day concerned with a spiritual practice. And I've mentioned a lot of practices so far, I guess 14, uh, that I've derived from uh, Sir John's writings from this book. Uh, but what I would like to suggest is, uh, is a basic spiritual practice that uh, he recommends early on in the book. And I, I will read it. Um, he recommends uh, that we stay poised and balanced that we do our best each day, that we utilize the insight that compassion, kindness, honesty, love, and generosity uh, to use the insights that they bring into our lives and which, through these insights, which make our lives a joyous experience for ourselves and others. So utilize the insights that come from practicing compassion and love. Acting in this way every day, according to Sir John, we will note, we will see that our concerns, our problems wear away, and we're able to meet new situations creatively and beneficially. So uh, this is a very practical, uh, and this is not an eyes closed type meditation, it's a very practical, eyes open, hands open to the world approach to things. And the, the fact that he could state this in such a way uh, does say something about his personality and his character, I'm sure. I'm sure he, this was his practice, and uh, he was not only financially successful, materially successful, but he was successful as a person who gave to others. Uh, his philanthropy is, I think, a sign of his, of his great charity and concern for other human beings. Um, and so another practice that uh, Sir John suggests is the quote uh, that, uh, that is, is for today's spiritual practice. As he said, look with the eyes of love. And I'll, I'll read a bit of a longer quote where this uh, phrase uh, occurs. What would happen in our, in our world if we decided to look with the eyes of love? Will we behold beauty and truth in every person we meet? Uh, the idea being that we would. Would we be more receptive to the thoughts and feelings of others? Of course, it's a rhetorical question. We would. This is what love is. Would we applaud and be joy joyous supporters of other people's divine ideas? The idea is that other people's creativity is their way of participating in, in the divine. Would we be, for be forgiving and compassionate in our relationships? And the answer, of course, should be yes. An interesting thing then happens when we look with the eyes of love, and that is that we begin to act in all of these ways towards others. Um, and so looking at others with the eye of love uh, is a characteristic expression from Sir John. And again, it's, it's one of these singular words that I've been talking about now for the last four or five days, gratitude, forgiveness, uh, love, uh, that are um, uh, one word uh, uh, recipes for actually living a much happier life. And this is being verified by the, uh, by the positive uh, uh, positive psychology and the great deal of research that's being done there. So um, if we were able to look upon others with the eye of love, we would probably begin to notice that there is the same lovingness in other human beings. And even if it's not there, our look of love toward them can help to create it, which then can help to change the situations which we may otherwise find so difficult. Um, to continue on with this theme, uh, if you look upon the world with the eyes of love, you will become fearless because as the Bible says, as the New Testament says, perfect love casts out fear. I'm quoting from Sir John right now. You can be happy if you look at the world with the eyes of love because disharmony cannot enter where love abides. You will not be lonely, Sir John uh, claims, because love will fill your world with loving companions. Those who love find a response. You will not uh, be sad because love is the greatest bearer of happiness. You will be more successful because love never fails. You will be beloved because like attracts like, and love is a tremendous attracting power. You will be alive, alert, and increasingly aware because love sharpens all the faculties. So, uh, obviously, love is a powerful force. And in the first lecture, I tried to diversify uh, it to some degree what this singular word actually means in different contexts. So, um, 
how can we actually practice that? So we don't actually have to think of this as a kind of physical looking at people with, with I don't know, loving eyes. That could actually be alarming sometimes in some contexts, I'm sure. So it's not really a physical practice. It's really more of a mood. It's an attitude. Uh, it's a way in which we treat others. Um, a, a kind of a basic kindness, a basic gentility, a basic politeness. It's a little, it's very much like what Confucius had in mind uh, when he spoke about uh, being a humane person, being a, a junza, a person who displays ren in every day, in your everyday life. Uh, so um, perhaps we can put this to work the next time we experience a small inconsideration when someone uh, jostles us out of the way or some minor of someone moves ahead of us in a line. Uh, these are situations which are small laboratories in which we can begin to develop uh, this capacity to look more kindly upon the people around us. Now, I really do tend to think that in our day and age uh, that this is a very simple uh, prescription and yet, we need to hear it, because I think that there is indeed a, a breakdown in civility. Now, concerns with civility need not only be the concern of traditionalists. On the other hand, tradition isn't all bad either. Uh, in times of great uh, emotional chaos and, and civil discord, sometimes a call to return or at least to reconsider tradition can have some value. Uh, when I think about my own life, in the late 60s, a time of great social confusion, um, I found myself attracted to Asian spiritualities, and then I began to study with some traditional teachers from India. And only now, only years later, did I realize that I was actually responding to a very ancient tradition of spirituality. It was a very traditional move to make, to look to these teachers for guidance. And I think that's the role that that uh, tradition plays. And so to hear someone say, let's act in a civil manner, the call to civility can be, be very useful at a time of in, uh, when incivility is on the rise. Now, this idea of looking upon others with love is not limited to the New Testament. It's certainly not uh, an invention of Sir John. Uh, but in the Buddhist tradition, there is a, re a revered, ancient, and today I would say widely practiced meditation called metta meditation, or sometimes translated as loving kindness meditation. And if you ever take a course in mindfulness meditation, uh, you undoubtedly will be familiar with or you will encounter various stereotypical ways of practicing metta or loving kindness meditation. And so today as we end, I think that I would like to do a, uh, or at least model for you, a, a very quick, uh, a very short uh, version of metta meditation. And so this is really more of an eyes closed type, sitting under the Bodhi tree type meditation because it begins verbally and it uses imagery, but it generally tends to end in a kind of sublime state of inner calmness and happiness. And so I'd like to invite you to a metta, med metta meditation from the Buddhist tradition. So now that your eyes are closed and perhaps you're sitting straight but comfortably, you can relax your shoulders, take a deep breath or two and soften your face. And at home you can do this more slowly. And as in virtually all forms of meditation like this, just bring your attention to your breath. Become aware of the inflow and outflow of your breath. And as you become focused on your breath and you can stay with your breath for a couple of cycles, you may want next to bring your focal point of attention to the center of your chest, to your heart. And you can affirm now that your heart will be open with kindness and peace to all beings. And you can wish to be filled with the spirit of loving kindness. And you may ask to be peaceful and to feel compassion for yourself. And then you repeat this for other people in your world. Your heart is open to others 
and there's compassion for others, and there's loving kindness for others. And perhaps you even bring certain people into focus and you wish kindness and peace and happiness and loving kindness upon them. And as the meditation proceeds, there comes a point where it's not necessary any longer to continue visualizing or to internally verbalize. And one experiences oneself sitting in a radiant ocean of loving kindness and inner calmness.